In the last video, we talked about the NVIDIA GTX 1070 Founders Edition, but what about its previous generation, the 900 series? This is an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti. It was released in June of 2015 for an MSRP of $649. Let's find out if it's a good card for VR gaming. The GTX 980 Ti features the GM200 graphics processor based off of the Maxwell 2.0 architecture. It has a base clock of 1152MHz with a boost clock to 1241MHz. It has 2816 CUDA cores with 6GB of GDDR5 VRAM and a 384-bit bus. It's dual slot and measures 295mm long. It's also flippin' heavy. Now this is an old card at 7 years, but is it still good? Let's pop it in and find out. Now when it comes to testing, I'll be testing this with a valve index at 120Hz and at 70% resolution. The computer that we'll be testing uh, with the graphics card has an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, 32GB of GDDR4 memory at 3200MHz, and 5.5TB of storage. Before we install the card, I would like to thank a viewer for helping me with this video. When I originally installed the card, I could not get the computer to post and I couldn't get anything on screen. They suggested that I go into the MSI BIOS and change the PCIe settings from 4.0 to 3.0. That fixed the issue, thank you so much. This video would have not been possible without your help. When testing this card, I used the exact four games as last time. Beat Saber, Half-Life Alex, Boneworks, and Bone Lab. Beat Saber was up first, and to zero surprise whatsoever, it ran absolutely phenomenally. There was no frame hitching, the game ran perfectly smooth, and there were no problems whatsoever. Boneworks is up next, and Boneworks, even though the headset was set to 120Hz, insisted at running at 90fps. Other than that, there weren't many issues. I dropped the settings to low and used the same settings as last time on the 1070 card, and the game ran pretty much fine with no issues whatsoever. Though Boneworks is notoriously hard to run, so there was the occasional frame hitch or glitch. It wasn't bad, and it was perfectly playable in this format. Half-Life Alex was after Boneworks, and it automatically adjusted the settings based on the new hardware configuration. Half-Life Alex ran a lot better than the 1070 actually. There weren't any frame hitching and there weren't any slowdowns either. Gunplay, gameplay, and Steam VR tracking didn't wig out this time. This is probably due to the slightly stronger GM200 core, 
though both cards do perform pretty much the same. Bone Lab was last, and I was honestly not expecting this one to run very well. But on the lowest preset, it ran fantastically. There were zero problems. Mods worked great, different avatars worked just fine, and the gameplay didn't slow down. The physics didn't feel janky, and it ran a lot better than Boneworks, which was a little surprising. When it comes to thermals, this card didn't really get hot enough to start to thermal throttle. It kept its cool most of the time, though it did get a little toasty near the end. The card does get a little noisy once the fans start to ramp up. Here's a recording. The horsepower that this graphics card packs was honestly mind-blowing to me. The GeForce 900 series released in 2014 with the TI variants in 2015. And this card is seven years old. The performance that the seven-year-old card has is honestly just mind-blowing. It ran Bone Lab, Boneworks, Half-Life Alex, and Beat Saber with absolutely no sweat. It powered through these tough challenges and came out on top with little to no casualties. Though it did throw me through a loop when trying to actually get the damn thing to work in this new system, but we got there in the end. Things to take away from this are, it is an older card, so some newer computers like this one may not recognize it. I had to change the PCIe settings from 4.0 to 3.0 because this is a 3.0 based card. Some motherboard BIOSes won't automatically switch, so you may need to manually change it before the card is swapped, which I did have to do that. Price-wise, you can often get the 980 Ti for uh, under $100, and it packs more performance than the last card we covered, the 1070, even though it has less VRAM. When it comes to VR, this thing is an absolute monster. It demolishes pretty much any game you can throw at it, if you're willing to drop the settings. And that's the case for most older graphics cards. They perform really well, but not on ultra, can it run crisis settings, which is perfectly fine. I didn't test any social VR applications like VR Chat, Rec Room, and Neos because they have user-generated content, and they are constantly changing. Because of this, they don't serve as a good benchmark, so I didn't want to use them in testing. Plus, VR Chat just runs like a shit show on any hardware. You have to have dual 4090s to get the thing to run properly. That's all for this episode. I want to thank you all for watching, and thanks for liking the new format change. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!